This video is about what is motion and what causes it. So um, we'll do the short version and then we'll do the slightly longer version. So what is motion is uh, when you have objects, object O, and that object changes position to a new position. Um, so to change position it has to have had motion of some sort. What causes that? Quick answer, a force. In fact, it's usually um, a, a mixture of forces. Okay. So here's a really quick example. We'll deal with our box again. We've got a box. We want to move it, causing the motion. And uh, so we're going to apply a force. You might be a, um, a person um, um, here. And you're, um, you're going to push against that um, block. Okay, so you apply a force that way. Um, another force that's going to be acting in this situation is um, the, the the block will provide a resistance to motion, sort of through um, friction. I'm being a little bit vague here, but we're just trying to give the general principles. So there'll be actually a reaction force on the surface of that block, um, and uh, there's also going to be a friction force down on the ground here which um, uh, friction is a force which opposes motion um, and friction changes depending on whether something's sliding over the two surfaces or whether they are sort of fixed together and because you can apply a force and have friction acting without sliding occurring okay so overall all those forces have to add up now this this is the only tricky one here this one here um, is really uh, an extension of the friction um, and this one here is sort of applied down the bottom, um, which is where the cause of the friction occurs. So this person pushes a sort of a tension force, and that tension force is transferred to the box, which moves on the ground, acts on the ground, and friction acts in the opposite direction. Okay, so um, anyway, there has to be a net that is an overall force in this direction for that box to move. Okay, it has to be a net force in that direction. If there's not a net force in that direction, or any direction, then you'll get no motion. Because uh, that's reason, the laws of motion um, are something like this. First law uh, says that um, objects at rest will stay at rest. So uh, you then have to apply uh, a force, um, which is where the second law comes in, to cause... Um, a acceleration. Um, so we'll just state it this way. And force leads to acceleration, or force is proportional to acceleration. And the third force, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So if you for add, apply force one way, there'll be a force experienced in another direction as well, um, which is your reaction forces and so forth. Um, and that leads to, uh, yeah, and the other, the reaction, if you like. Um, is to, <laughs> roughly speaking, get something moving. So there's your reaction to the force that you're applying. Anyway, okay, keeping it really, really vague uh, uh, with those, but just keep them in mind because they are useful later on. The other thing to bear in mind is energy. Um, energy is required to get things moving, and one way to think about forces is forces are ways of transferring energy from one form into another, or changing the... Um, the form of the energy. So moving energy we call kinetic energy. Um, energy, once you've pushed something, you, you've probably generated heat in your muscles and, and friction through the moving of things, um, So which also generates heat. So heat is a form of energy. Um, you can also have gravitational potential energy when you lift an object up um, and when that thing drops back down it'll gain kinetic energy and when it hits the ground there's sound energy and all sorts of other things like that. But it's all related to uh, motion and the causes of it.